All right. So, hello everyone. Please let me know if everything's working. We had some technical difficulties, so if you could write a comment or something in the live chat, would be appreciated. <laughs> and otherwise, I'm just going to start. If you are seeing my mouth moving and you're not hearing any sound, also please let us know. So, my name is Mike Borma. I'm a teacher at the Borma Institute. Um, some of you know me as a teacher, some of you don't know me at all. Um, some of you know me as a friend, because some of my friends are also watching, I think. Uh, um, this live stream idea came uh, because I was talking with Holly Chapel last week. Uh, we were saying, like, um, yeah, it's a little, you know, everyone's in this difficult situation right now where we have to stay at home and uh, all the classes can't happen, all these demonstrations that we had planned are not going to happen. For, exam for example, the chapel conference in Ireland, uh, those things all have to be postponed indefinitely. But also, we had things, fun things planned. Susan McLeary was coming to our school, actually today. Um, she was going to do a mass class, but it's not uh, happening, ob obviously. Uh, so then we thought, why not do uh, like a, a live chat or a, a conference? So uh, then I thought, maybe just do a demo because you know, staring into a camera and just talking, not doing anything with my hands, makes me a little bit nervous. So let's start just by um, doing the first arrangement. The first arrangement I have is over here. I'm going to grab it. Du, 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 du. It's a, well, it's not done yet, of course. I'm going to make it. Uh, it's made by using wires, um, a branch of wood, two vases, as you can see. These two vases come from Angelica and our home. They're our favorite vases, so I hope I'm not breaking them today. Uh, there's water inside them to give them a little bit more weight. Then there's candles that I fixed using wires and such. Um, and then there's all these tubes. How did I fix all these wires? Well, um, maybe, actually we have a second camera. If it's going to work, we don't know, but uh, if you could come in, Axel, on the second camera, we can show a little bit some details of this thing. Is it possible? Can you come? Yeah? All right. So here you can see all these techniques that are used. Um, basically, this is what I've learned from Gregor Lersch, really amazing master florist from Germany. I know. Uh, and uh, yeah, the camera's a little bit laggy because it's on the Wi-Fi, but hopefully uh, the audio works and everything. So, all right. So, uh, and you can see here this wire technique. It's like a, a, a little stand on there, and then it's clasping the vase, so it, sh it should be stuck. Okay. Now we're going back over to the other camera, and I'm just going to bring over the arrangement to you. Let's just do it like that. Who cares? So, you can see here. We got the clasping technique, and um, it's on the vases, and that's what's supporting the whole thing. Maybe we can play around with zoom or anything, I don't know, later on. So how did I do this stuff? Uh, I used these very thick wires. We ordered them from uh, Wireman. Actually, the vases come from Alflora. That's a local wholesaler that we have here. Uh, we always find a lot of fun stuff there. And I used uh, a drill. And then uh, I put them on the drill. Unfortunately, I can't show you from close by. Because then the camera would be out of focus. But I take my wires, twist them on very strongly. Actually, it's easier if I not put it in there first. So now I can bind it very strongly. It's the binding wire from Oasis. It comes in a couple of colors, like uh, beige, uh, a dark brown, and then this nice green color that I think fits in very well with the vases. So I bind them on there by hand a little bit. And then this whole thing is made using this technique. Maybe if I have another 
chance, I'll show you how to make the actual um, foot. So I just spin the drill. Let the drill spin. I'm not going to spin the drill. That's, that would be weird. And then go all the way to the end. Then if I want, I can make the wires go different directions. Maybe I want a foot or, or two legs. Then I can go like this. Wire all the way there. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, so we wire to the side. <laughs> totally out of focus, but. And then go back to the other leg as well. So, anyone in the comment section saying stuff? <laughs> You got maybe your phone over there? Okay. And then, let's see, one second, sorry. Just gonna check out if, if you are actually there. Oh yeah, we're there. Okay. <laughs> hey guys. All right, I'm seeing the questions and everything now. Angelica can maybe uh, check out the comment section. Okay. All right, cool. So now we know that there's actually people there. <laughs> everything is working. Okay, that's good. Yes, I heard the question, how thick is the wire, right? So this wire is 1.8, I believe. Some of them are two millimeters, some of them are 1.8. I use different wire thicknesses for different things. So if I want to have something very strong structural, I'll use the very thicker one. If I want to use something very like um, maneuverable, if, if that's a word, I use the thinner one. Um, then, we also, sell it, yeah? we also sell them, yes. We have a flower. <laughs> My mother's in the background saying, we also sell them. So. Um, and we do, we have a, a web shop that's called um, Dutch Floral, Des uh, Floral Design Supplies. Uh, you can find it on our website. But anyway, we'll link it later if that's necessary. Um, so then we have these tubes and we connect those tubes by binding them. And I basically take a piece of wire. I like to go around it like this twice. And then I twist the tube so that the wire goes strongly against the tube. And instead of me just wiring that direction, and that makes no sense because it's not getting any tighter. Some people do it once around. Sometimes do it, some people do it three times around. I do it two times. Doesn't really matter. Um, all right, hi. And then um, we have this little wire here, and that that's where we connect them to. Uh, so I have all these tubes on here, and then we have the flowers. I got some astrantia in here, astrantia. They are from Margin Par. Uh, I got all these flowers here from Floral Fundamentals growers. Uh, they've been, you know, everyone's in tough times right now. Everybody has to destroy a lot of their flowers, as everyone knows. Uh, like, not, they're not allowed to put everything on the market. So for florists, sometimes it's also difficult to actually get the flowers. Um, but they donated it to uh, Floral Fundamentals ambassadors, a bunch of flowers, so that we can make work and promote their beautiful blooms. So uh, Astrantia from uh, Margin Par uh, from last got everything last week, so they're still very strong. Uh, then I have um, from a very close grower nearby here, uh, Media Verdi. I got these beautiful uh, blooms 
of Viburnum. Really nice people. They live just down the street. We visit them very often. Then from um, a grower uh, from the south, well, not from the s well, a little bit from the south of Holland, uh, it's uh, Ansu, Ansu Vandas. Uh, they supplied these beautiful, beautiful, completely white Vandas. And I'm going to use them in this piece. Uh, and I have now basically this design is kind of suspended from uh, the vases. I wouldn't say it's displacement because if it's a displacement, what Gregor teaches, it's like a little bit more away from the base, but we're working a little bit around the base. Uh, then I have um, these candles. They're also stuck in the same way like this, like the vases are. So, um, first thing I want to do is make a nice little vocal area so that we know where to put everything else and then we know where the eye is drawing towards. I think it would be nice to have like an asymmetric, um, asymmetrical kind of design. So I'm putting the focus not in the middle, but a little bit off center. So one might come here. Then I have another beautiful Fanda that I would like to place. I'll place it over here. So they're quite close together because they should be pulling the attention. So let's see how that looks. I got a big screen behind me, oh well, in front of me, <laughs> so I can see kind of what I'm doing from the other side as well, so that's very convenient. But I also can walk around and then just, you know, have a little peek over there. So just correcting them so that they're placement placing a little bit nicer. So they're stuck in between there very nicely. <laughs> then um, another eye catcher or another nice placement would be the these two little ones here. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, I want to place this one here. This one there. So we got a lot of stuff going on over here, and then we'll have a little bit less happening here. So, let's see if that's placed nicely, more or less. Yeah, so anyone have a question I've heard? Some, uh, there was a question in the comment section. Um, what are the strings on the wires for? Is it decoration? These, uh, are we talking about these strings? Um, I, think I think so, right? So this is the binding wire from Oasis. So I think, for me, this is a decorative, pur purely decorative purpose. Um, I'm also using it to connect the tubes to the wire. So that's also, you know, that's also kind of technical, but still you know, I'm bringing it back in the whole design. So it's both decorative and tec technical in some aspects. Then, let's see, I have some nice tulips that I could have some movement from. Very beautiful tulips. They are also from last week, so they've opened up nicely. I'd like to have one of these Let's see, how are we going to do it? Coming from here. Get some movement going, floating over, so the attention is pulled towards the heart flowers. And then maybe one is going to peek at us over here. So, like that. Maybe a little more like this. Okay. So, actually, these are kind of now pushed out of the way. So, let's put it like that. Then, let's see. We got some kalas. Us kalas, no. We're going back to um, the gerbras. We have some gerbras from Holstein. Also, I so there's lots of different gerbras. Some people, you know, they don't like them so much, but I think there's so many new different types of gerbras that are very exciting. They have this, these pastas and they have these ones that are like petals all the way to the inside. So they call them, I think, the dahlias, dahlia gerbras, if I'm not mistaken. And I see Angelica says there's another question. Um, Jose is asking, are these the white orchids? 
uh, orchids. The, yeah, those are the all white Vandas from Ansu. Yeah, so those are like a new breed. They released them last year, I think, and they're very beautiful. Totally, completely all white. Um, then the placement of my tubes is kind of random. I didn't really think it completely through beforehand. I just think, well, maybe I want to have some tubes here, maybe some flowers there. Um, and I have to think about the placement of my tubes to put them at the end of the stem, of course. So I sh some people, they put tubes in an arrangement and they think that's where they want to have the flower. But the flower comes somewhere else. You know, this tube is coming all the way from here and the actual flower stuff is happening over here. There's some movement in between. But I normally don't cut off the flower heads too short. I like to keep them a little long so that you can have some movement. Then I'm going to do some placement here uh, with create some more asymmetry. So we got these two here as a group. Then I want to have that come back somewhere else in the arrangement. So I make this tulip go over here. Then I got all these um, side wires, these branches, these wires are all branching out and I can use them to support some flowers if I want. So for example, this one here, very nicely placed, I can just have a flower rest on there or I can have my wire a little bit bent so that it's securing the flower. Then the callas, these are from uh, uh, the Haas, the Haas uh, let's see, we got a lot of stuff happening over here, so maybe I want some stuff happening over there now. So, um, let's see, I thought this one out beforehand. Um, da -da -da -da. Yeah, so let's see it from the front for a sec because it's difficult to see for me. So I want to have something coming here. So what I do is I push it through here and I'll make it go through there and then if you don't have a tube there yet which I do now but if you don't you just stick the cala there and then you'll put a tube on a wire like we did here and then we put the tube in there afterwards so I'm gonna do that with the second cala searching for a place to put it and there's of course water in the tubes so then this I don't have a tube for yet, so I'll place it somewhere that I want. Mm, let's see, maybe I, if I'm bringing some purple over there, I need some purple over here too. So let's see if we have a nice tube for that. Where do I put it? Maybe actually I'm going to use this tube, why not? Make it bend out here. Let's see. No, it's not so visible. So let's use. Do, 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 do. Look for a nice place for the flower. Okay. I'm going to go underneath this one. I'm hoping I'm st not standing too much in front of the arrangement. So, okay, the there's still some movement that direction. So you can still see it peek out from there, if that's correct, more or less. Let's put this a little bit more in a way that it's not in front of there. Okay, so then figuring out a place for this guy here or girl. Probably going somewhere there. So then we have two guys here, one coming there. So then I'm placing this tube where the color is ending. Let's try to make it go through. Mm. 
We got a question I've heard. What's the question? Um, Amy is asking if we can repeat how to fix the gurgle. Ah, yes. I'll get there in a moment. I'm fighting now with my wires. I'm just going to make this wire a little shorter because I don't need it that long. So placing the gerbras, I actually didn't really talk about it, uh, but so the gerbras, they have a certain movement going up towards the sun. Uh, so it's growing towards that direction. And I, that's why I not place it like this because I'm just pretending that the sun is at 12 o'clock. So it's exactly up there. So I make it grow like that and it's going there. And then the same is for this other gerbra here. Sometimes you can massage it a little bit and then, you know, they stay in place. So that's uh, how I placed the gerbras. And I want to have a lot of focus here. And then, so maybe if um, this is uh, two thirds, one third of the flowers are happening over here, two thirds of flowers are happening over here. So the tulips are two here, then one tulip is coming over here. Um, so that's kind of the thought process behind it. And now, still need to put some water for that kala because we want to have it last as long as possible. Of course, always have to water our flowers as best as possible. So, like that. Then I use a tube filler to fill the tubes. And um, every day we have to check the flowers if there's enough water in, in the tubes because uh, some of them drink very much. They drink quite fast. Then, so now I just stuck the, oh, now I just stuck the tube in there and not really wired any of the wire that I connected it with. So take a little piece of binding wire and I twist it around and that should keep it in there. Do we have any other questions so far from people? No, just people saying hi. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So I didn't really say hi to everyone. So there's people from the chapel designers watching, but there's also our students watching. So I would like to welcome everyone to this stream. Um, we really appreciate that you guys are watching. Um, and we're really, you know, it's sad that we cannot have our classes go th through, but maybe we can figure something else out and do something. Then we have, our students from Taiwan watching too. Uh, so I would like to say welcome to you guys too. Um, when you uh, will be translating everything afterwards, when you is uh, uh, the person who is in charge of our sister school over there, the Burma Institute Taiwan, and he has been a great help uh, through the years. And also in this case now with the whole Corona situation, he's gonna help out the Taiwanese students by translating everything. So thank you very much mm, and yeah. Let's see how it goes. Nelika, that's the part uh. that uh, I really like it. All right, thank you, Nelika. <laughs> Appreciate <laughs> it. So, <laughs> let's see. Let's create some more movement in here. Uh, right now, this is there is a lot of stuff happening, but maybe we can have a little bit more of movement going on. So I'm going to place a little asparagus over there, and that asparagus is again uh, making another movement, another line movement. Um, then, ah, I hear a question over there, yeah? Um, Amy is asking, is it better to fix all the screws in advance or one by one? So, um, I put a lot of tubes in beforehand, then I hope it goes well. <laughs> you know, you never, you never know exactly, at least I, I don't know. Some people might be, might know in advance exactly where to place the flowers. I'm sure Gregor really mm -hmm. knows exactly where he's putting everything, but not always do we use all the tubes that we put in there. So we can always remove a tube if it's too much, but we never want to have a tube in there that's without water eventually. Oh, sorry, never want a tube there without a flower because that doesn't make any sense. Um, and I also add as I go. So you just saw me add another tube, the smaller tube, uh, and maybe I'll add some more tubes as I go on. Uh, of course, I prepared this demo a little bit in advance. So I already know some of the flower placements that I want, um, but as I was planning, as I was planning the demo, um, I also figured, oh, um, I need another tube here, or I need another tube here. So that's what this construct is very useful for, because we have all these wires in here, and they are like branching out everywhere. Um, also, 
uh, you know, we can always make a new line. So we can always add another tube somewhere if we want. Sorry, Angelica, you wanted to? Uh, yeah, Carol said hi. Oh, hi, Carol. <laughs> Good that you've joined too. Goedemiddag. Hope I hope you feel better. I've heard Caro was a little bit unwell. How does he feel? He's okay, relatively speaking. But we'll find out in a minute because there's a little bit of a delay. I'm talking and then, you know, it's, it's sending out through the internet. So there's a little bit of a delay while I'm doing this. Um, I'm kind of lost track what I was doing. Oh yeah. So uh, this is one branch, uh, but there is another branch in here, and. Um, I don't know, maybe later, of course, I'll phot photograph this piece. I hoped that we would have a second camera that could shoot this footage from closer by, uh, but the Wi-Fi is uh, having some malfunctions and it works on the Wi-Fi. So, uh, but there is some extra wires that is carrying this branch over here. And I can show you uh, on something else I've made what I mean by that. So, for example, um, I got this here plant material that we just looked up what the name was again. <laughs> what was the name again? We're, we're, we're getting that. Research is being done as we speak. Um, so what I did was I stuck, I, I took this um, stem, I stuck a wire in there, and then I put some um, water resistant tape, uh, sorry, no, floral tape that I got over here. And I stuck that, uh, no, I, don't, I didn't stuck it. I bound that around and then to close off the wound. Then I put another wire there because I wanted to have two wires to make it more stable. And then I put the binding wire around that to make it decorative because we don't, I'd, I'd rather not see this. I'd rather have some decorative element. And that's kind of what I did over here with this branch. So that branch is just floating in the air by uh, um, leaning on that wire. So, sorry, I, I heard a, you wanted to do a question? Oh, hey. So thank you for this. Oh, thank you very much, Susan. And Stephanie Stephan Nassa says hi. Hey, hey. <laughs> and Helen says beautiful, my son. Uh, thank you very much. Nice that you guys are all here. I'm s sorry it's a little early. It's, you know, in the U.S. right now it's a little early. But thank you very much for waking up so early for me. And I'm sorry that you were waking up so early yesterday and that I wasn't there. <laughs> we had some mis um, miscommunication yesterday. So... Also, so I have this here. Why did I have this here? Um, I have this here so that I can elongate this shape. So right now this is kind of abruptly stopping. Uh, I want to place a little something there. Peperonia. Peperonia. Thank you, Amo. Very fast. Peperonia. It's a tricky word to pronounce. Also, you know, in 90% of the cases, I would know the Latin name, but I don't know the common names in English, of course, because English is my second language. Uh, so if anyone in the comments knows any of the English common names for these materials and some other one, someone has a question about it, please, uh, you know, we can help each other out, share it with each other. So I'm bending this through here and hoping that it will stay at the position that I want. Well a little bit more than hoping because I will put some wire around it. Let's see. Yeah, that's about the length that I want. So I have some more of that Oasis binding wire. I'll just take out these strands for now so that I have some more excess there. And then I'm, there you go, wiring it around. And then I'm going to connect it on another spot as well over here. So I prefer it to have two places to stick to connect. Uh, that way, you know, it's not gonna wobble around. If you stand on two legs, it's more secure than standing on one leg. Uh, okay, English is not my sec first language again, sorry. <laughs> Holly says hi. Hey Holly, thank you for checking in. So there we go. All right. So I want these to be a little bit pointing upwards. So there we go. And I can always correct anything that is not at the position that I want. So there we go. I should go back in there. Actually, if I take something out, I should 
better give it a fresh cut because as soon as some thing is getting out of the water, I'm giving it a fresh cut uh, so that it can suck the water up better. All right, so then we have some more things. We got some nice astilba from Amazing Astilba. Very fitting name. I'll place these over here. So there's a group of two. Let's see. Um, I want these to have one a little higher and one a little lower. Not at the same height. And if someone, if it's not really cooperating, I'll just take a little binding wire and give it a lending hand to support it a little bit better. Can I ask you what also that's the question? What are, in which, what's the question? Having a helping hand with wire. Why not? I don't know, is that the question? Yes, that's the question. Okay, so yes. Okay, no, of course, yeah, you can. Why not? I mean, if you need to replace the flowers, you'll have to, you know, take off the little piece of binding. Angelica, there's another question. Yes, Amo has a question about the candles. Yeah. Are they purely for uh, decorative purpose, or can we also light them? Yeah, so these are definitely, you're able to light them. Th they are decorative and functional so of well well of course at a certain point we're getting very close to the vanda uh, but then you just remove them put in another candle we can just take this out it's wired in there but it's stuck on a wire so we can just pull it out and we can put another one in that's not a problem so all right so i think we have all flowers in all of the tubes now uh, so we can say it's done uh, so we have things repeating Something is over here, it's repeating over here, and it's like always like two thirds, one third. Uh, we've got these beautiful. If I burn them over here. So, and then that's it for this one. If anyone has any questions for this one, please go ahead. I'll make a picture of this so we can have a better look later. Then I'll move them out of the way for now. Yeah. Amy asks, it seems lighter items on the higher plate. Correct. Yeah. So um, that's also a good point. I like to have uh, the eye draw from the top to the bottom a little bit. In this case, I'm pulling the attention towards that uh, center, uh, towards that eye catcher. Then uh, I got some things that I made last week. Those are already done. So let's just take them. Um, so the whole like open outline trend that of course the chapel designers are very familiar with um, is something that we didn't really have as a, a teachable thing uh, yet, but uh, we've had conferences and discussions with teachers like how do we teach that? So we kind of try and develop a way to do it uh, of course, it's totally different probably how I do it than how other people do it. Um, but we were talking also with Gregor in January about the topic. And um, he's also very much into uh, deciphering how it works. Because a lot of people, uh, it, you know, for a lot of people it comes natural to make these kind of things. But they don't really know how to put in words how to make them. So we're kind of trying to figure out what the rules are for that. Um, and how to make that beautiful. So if... I don't know if I succeeded here, so if Holly or someone can, you know, say like, ah, this is kind of how I would imagine putting flowers in somewhere, then, you know, I tried. So uh, I can discuss what I've done here. Um, first off, my idea was to repeat things and to have it all sided. Uh, Gregor calls this open outline. I think that's a very fitting term uh, because, you know, even though it's um, classically inspired, uh, it's romantic, it's kind of like 
what the old master painters were doing, more or less, but different. So it's, it's old and it's new, and I, I really like it. Um, and I think how I achieved this look was by having uh, height differences. So I don't have a really like a clear shape. It's just like some stuff is more in there, some stuff is more out there. Uh, but I did do clear grouping. Uh, sometimes people just make stuff grow everywhere, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, but for me, I don't know, I always go back to the logic that we've we learned during our classes. Um, and that is stuff grows up towards the sun, um, uh, stuff is grouped, and here and there uh, we have our thinner materials longer, our more bigger materials more low, deep and compact. So we've got these beautiful chrysanthemum over here, they are kind of more deep. Um, and I've tried to work in a color palette that's very close, so it's like, um, what you call it, it's ton sur ton, but it's, uh, it's also uh, analogous, harmonious, harmonious color, harmonious color scheme. Yeah, so uh, we've got these beautiful hellebores in here, uh, also from Floral Fundamentals growers. Then there is these lilacs that are very gorgeous from uh, Seringa.nl and uh, ranunculus. Uh, I think summer flower has ranunculus. So then you can see the smaller one is here, the bigger one is here. Um, and then whatever comes on one side, I try to repeat on the other side. So I have uh, Seringa, or sorry, Seringa. So the lilacs over here, but I make them come back over here. Then I have long, more inside, long, more inside, and I play with that. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, this piece over here. Then I'm just, I'm just, I just keep on going. If anyone is getting bored, please tell me. <laughs> We've never done something before like this, so uh, it's all new to us. Then this one, um, we can do it like that or we can do it like this, it's all sided, is a piece um, that I also think is an open outline, but it's totally not like boho-ish. Um, it's more like a parallel arrangement. Oh, sorry, uh, we have a question. Um, not really a question. How do you feel about the other one, yep. monochromatic? Yeah, monochromatic, yes, exactly. Yeah, so I think... Analog, monochromatic, ton sur ton, and those are. Yes, I did definitely did some grouping. I'll just take it back for a sec. I would say um, it's partially grouped and partially not grouped, and I think that's what makes the design fun, and uh, that's what makes it look carefree. At least um, I don't know if it looks carefree. I tried to make it look carefree. So here you can see the ranunculus. That's what I would call grouping. Uh, it's there's they are also they're groups and they're lines. So the lilacs are coming out like a line. Uh, and then the hellebore here is all by himself. Then there's a hellebore here all by himself or herself. Um, so there's grouping and there is not grouping. Single flowers. Uh, there is two, um, uh, what do we call them again? Two of the South African safari material. Protea, Protea yes, that's it. Uh, two here and then there's one coming back here. So I always try to do like, two on one side, one on the other side, then we have these asymmet asymmetrical triangles. It's also kind of asymmetrical-ish, the flower placement at least. So, okay, yeah. Uh, Tim uh, is saying you are doing great, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Love the color combo. Awesome. Um, Nal Same is saying keep on going, Mike, it's very cool. <laughs> Thank and you, yes, guys. <laughs> hey. So Thank you very much. So uh, this other design, uh, this is also a vase from Alflora. I think it's very beautiful. It's like a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, it's Angelica's favorite, one of her favorites. Um, and here I'm also trying to play with movement. And you can see my thinking of uh, uh, rhythm again. So we have two here, one comes back over here. Then we have some um, beautiful viburnum. Also, I made this thing last week and they're still all very beautiful. Um, I think. And then they're coming back over here. Uh, then there's some movement going outside, down, downwards. So we have some contrasting movements. So not everything is going up, but some stuff is also going down. Um, so yeah, but originally in this piece, there were two more items that I took out because uh, I had beautiful, beautiful Vandas from um, Ansu, but I bought them three weeks ago until last week. They were still gorgeous, um, but now they what we, they're a little bit what we call croquant. 
So, <laughs> so, they're, so I have them somewhere and I can show them online, have a picture for them. But there was a placement here and then I had some coming down here. I'll post the pictures on Instagram. Um, so if you want to follow me on Instagram or have do already, then you can see them over there. Uh, sorry, question. Which ones? Oh, Fritillaria. Yes, Fritillaria, Imperialis, and oh, there's a hair from Angelica in there. Um, and they were from, yes, they were from my Peony Society. They are a grower from Floral Fundamentals that um, grows peonies everywhere around the world, I think. They have peonies all year long, so they can supply peonies off-season, in-season, doesn't matter. Of course, I think in off-season they might be a little bit more expensive than normally. But they also have these Fritillaria, um, and they also have Allium, uh, which I'm using another time. <laughs> yeah, but you, you posted it on the Instagram, right? Yeah. The I Fritillaria and the, and the Allium. Exactly, yeah. My mother said uh, I posted the Fritillaria and the Allium online. Uh, I, I tried to do... Uh, a bunch of flowers of every day. So um, because the growers supplied us all these beautiful materials, they wanted to have the word out of their stuff because, you know, there's not much they can do at the moment. Um, I'm posting, and other Floral Fundamentals ambassadors as well, are posting these online with, you know, that they're, that they're out there. So uh, next design I'm going to work on is a thing that I made a vase using it's also going to be open outline, but a little bit more messy, I hope. Uh, I'm using chicken wire for this. Um, I have to say, honestly, uh, for the previous two things I was showing, those were made with the Oasis, um, like 80% or 85% biodegradable line. I think it's, it's kind of controversial nowadays, the whole situation with Oasis. Um, and I do believe that they are doing their best to bring stuff out on the market that um, is going to be 100% biodegradable, ev biodegradable eventually. I'm not being sponsored by Oasis or anything to say that. We've used their materials for a long time. Uh, of course, we can use other techniques. We can use chicken wire. There's so many things. We can use tubes. We can do anything that we want to make beautiful materials. Uh, but I think that um, if we want to in, you know, make sure that everything will be biodegradable eventually, we have to kind of invest in those new technologies. So that's my way of thinking. I think we as a school want to, you know, work with chicken wire, but we also want to uh, work with the biodegradable oasis as a way to invest in the technology so that eventually it can be 100%. Um, but also there's other new stuff on the market. And that is, um, let's see, I put a box somewhere behind me. I'll be right back. It's uh, from a... Dutch company called AgraWool. Again, I'm also, I'm also not sponsored by AgraWool. I just, we just were very interested in this product. Uh, it's 100% natural. It's made from rock wool and sugar cane, I think. Um, it looks a little bit like the isolation material that you find in your home. Um, growers recognize it as the stuff that they grow their plants and flowers in. Um, and it's said to be 100% biodegradable. It only leaves stone flower, I believe. I looked it up online. Uh, I translated it in Google. They call it stone flower. Uh, so that's what that's the sand kind of thing that you feel. It's stone flower. Um, and it works like Oasis, but different because it's very soft. You stick stuff in um, and it's not easy to get in there, but it stays well. And I think that's something for another demonstration. If it's happening, I don't know, but that's some I can show you how that works and we can work with that also. Sorry, there's a question. Um, Susan Perry is asking, how did you find the agra wool? And yeah. uh, she means, uh, did you also like working with it? Yeah, ah, I see, yeah. Um, one sec, I'm just grabbing, a I'm just grabbing some water because I'm talking a lot. Yeah, so, mm, I have a paper cup because I'm not really to be trusted with glass. I'm, oh, it's already almost falling. So, um, how did we find, how did I find the agro wool? Well, um, first off, uh, we have a freelance teacher called Sylvia Meyer. Maybe she's watching this too. Um, 
she comes here every now and then and she saw us she saw Aga Wu on a fair and then she uh, you know everyone was interested in that stuff so she brought it over to here uh, and then I found that it works it works you know but it's kind of something you have to get used to because it's not as easy as sticking stuff in foam sticking stuff in foam is just like this you go in there, it's it's easy. But this stuff, you need to kind of have stems that are very strong. So uh, something like a tulip goes a little bit more difficult in there, but it works. So, yeah. Question, sorry. Is it compostable? They say so. Yes, they say it's a hundred percent. So actually, it's made from hundred percent natural materials, um, and the only thing that's left over eventually is something they call rock flower. And that's also something they use, yeah, it's like grainy kind of stuff. It's something they use also in plant food, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, um, but they have, I think they are getting a certificate of being 100% biodegradables. They're in the process of that. It's super new. It's just like a couple of months ago that it comes out on the market. I'm sorry, I got the question. We'll keep you updated. Yeah, we'll keep you updated on that. I'm sorry, yeah, because otherwise I'm just talking about that all the time. Sorry, so, um, but... Yeah, if you follow us, we'll keep you posted on that. Um, then, for this piece, I got some other stuff. First off, we got the chicken wire. Then I got some uh, hedera, that I ivies that I got from uh, our neighbor. And then uh, we have some asparagus. Uh, oh, that's my mother. Hi. hi. Well, you want to say hi? You want to wave to the camera for a sec? See that, everyone? My mother, hi. one and a half oh meter. God. One and a half meter. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so what we have here, we have ivy, so we have this also vase or base from uh, Alflora uh, and I want to extend that movement or extend the shape a little bit by creating some movement going outwards. So we've got some lines over there, there is already some pistachia in there and I'm using that to create some stability when I put in the flowers, they don't move all over the place. Um, then I have more materials actually, we got beautiful white syringa from uh, Seringa.nl, another floral fundamentals grower. And then we have Decker Gisante over here. They have these beautiful chrysanthemum. Then got some other stuff. A lot of stuff. Over here. And I'm putting these on the ground in a sec. We got some uh, dried poppies that I painted gold earlier. I would like to use them because we also painted this base gold using some uh, Oasis uh, color spray. Um, we got roses from, uh, what are these from? These are Porta Nova, yeah, these are Porta Nova. These are white Naomi's, beautiful big heads on there. Then we got um, some Nareens from uh, uh, De Wit Nerina, De Wit. Um, we got Lysiantus from Van der Lucht, or from Lucht they are called now. They have beautiful big heads on there and lots of side stems. I also took off some side stems to use in other things. I like to reuse the flowers as I'm just taking pictures of them. Um, that's what we have for this arrangement. So I would like to create first a little base with flowers in there and then I'm going to work from there. That's basically my tactic in this case. So, and eventually I don't want to see any um, chicken wire or anything. And I'm just, how do we call that? Is free balling a word I, or is that uh, offensive? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sounds a little weird. Uh, question? Yeah. Uh, when they is asking, is there uh, oasis underneath the chicken wire? No, it's just straight up water. Um, there's n it's not necessary to have also oasis in there. Um, it's just... It's just like a crumpled ball of chicken wire I put in there. And that's actually uh, from a very old kind of technique that we, old school, before, chick before Oasis was invented, people would still have to make flower arrangements. So either they would use a uh, kind of moss, they would make balls of it and then they would stick the flowers in there, or they would use chicken wire uh, and use that. So we've been teaching how to use chicken wire for a while. Um, Although we do not, um, we did not teach this specific style. Yeah, but we do it in the professional and the advanced course using the chicken wire. Um, Angelica, can you get maybe some more pistachio for me? 
or or mom maybe i can use a little bit more stuff and then there's a question angelica well you were laughing not a question but holly says like oh my gosh did he just say that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know so i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> see i was thinking like lisa farissa is saying go with freestyling Fro freestyling all right so i'm sorry all my english comes from television <laughs> All right, so, and I'm just creating different heights so that it's going to be nice and wild. And I repeat what I have on one side, I may come back somewhere else. <laughs> we got another comment. Sigmund says, free bowling is going without underwear. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm de> <laughs> like All right. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Okay. It's like the n instead of the naked chef, it's the naked florist or something. But no, no, I'm definitely wearing underwear. <laughs> well, or I'm not. You don't know. You know, I can be lying right now. I don't hear that. <laughs> Mother is like closing her ears. Yep. Okay, that's definitely uh, inappropriate term. Then I'll shy away from that. Yep. So. Yeah, my mother is saying throw it on the ground. So that's why I'm throwing it on the ground. Normally I never throw anything on the ground, just so you know. Because I'm afraid I'm not allowed to because I have we have a bucket somewhere normally. Sorry, another question? Um, Amy is asking, is this also an open seat one percent? Yeah, my idea is that it's I'm going to make another uh, open silhouette. So I'm playing with these um, heights and angles. And it's just my interpretation of... of, of such a thing. Anna says, I'm waiting. And, and, and Anita says also, I am waiting to you. <laughs> so I'm waving back. I keep thinking, Amy, Amy. But then I remember, it's Amy Chang. Then, then oh, because that would be when you, if it's Amy Chang. All right. Um, so let's come back here. Then some nice full blooms. So I thought it would be nice to work through this arrangement instead of just showing finished pieces. And again, this is just my interpretation of it. Yes, question? Oh, uh, yeah, when you were using Amy's uh, Right, uh, yeah, yeah. And That's what uh, I thought. Mel Chande is asking, asking, when did you get started with flowers? So, all right, so a little piece of Burma history. <laughs> so, um, basically, um, our family, for people that don't know, our family has been in flowers for um, a couple of generations. Um, my grandfather's grandfather was the first florist, he was a, um, a grower at first, because at that time growers and florists were basically the same thing. There were no florists, it was just growers that are doing flowers. If that makes sense, if that makes sense. They, they, there were no flower shops. Um, and then my grandfather uh, is the person who started the Burma Institute, so our school. Um, so I grew up in this school. Um, basically, I was born in the school, so my parents' house is here. Uh, I remember telling that to Holly and she was a little freaked out that I was born at home because apparently that's not such a normal thing. And I was like, that's a normal thing in the Netherlands. Everyone is being born at home. Then I looked it up and then apparently it was a normal thing in the 90s, but nowadays a lot more people are being born in, in the hospital. But so I was born and raised here. Uh, I always came, uh, uh, you know, I really enjoyed coming here of course my grandparents were always here after school I would come here they would be there and uh, you know we would hang out and uh, there would be soup and which is still the case uh, but now it's someone else who makes the soup um, so at good times um, Dunya and Angelica yeah exactly Angelica is actually making the soup on Friday and Dunya who is watching right now also is making the soup for the rest of the week um, but uh, yeah I'm drifting off I'm completely <laughs> drifting off talking about other stuff instead of about w myself. So um, so how did I get started? First, uh, I was always doing something like 
in art. Uh, I did graphic design school. Um, I did um, art school. And um, after doing that, I started helping out in the school by doing some graphic design stuff. And eventually it was like, why don't I just come work here? And then I did. And then I started doing all the courses that we have. So our um, professional course, our advanced course, and our master course. Uh, and after that, I started working, you know, doing some work here and there, um, helping out starting a flower shop in Czech Republic with really, really kind people from uh, whole floor. Patrick, if you're watching this, hey, good to see you again. Um, and then after that, I started uh, to teach like workshops. Then I started to do um, like uh, short courses and eventually I started teaching the professional course. And that's seven years ago now, I think, that I started teaching. Yeah, something like that. So that's more or less how long. I kind of grew up here, so I always was in, in between the flowers, but I just, I don't, I think I just never really saw it the way until I actually started working with flowers. So, yeah, uh, Angelica, there's another question. Yes, Marquita is asking, is this going to be an LA or oh, all sided? All sided, all -sided. yeah, all -sided. exactly. Yeah, I think so. And I'm actually just freestyling. So, um, as I'm talking, I'm doing all this stuff. And then I, because I'm noticing now that I'm going into something more low instead of just, if instead of having all these height differences, I'm focusing a little bit too much on the lower part. So let's put some stuff in there to make it more, create some more depths and some height variations. So we have beautiful viburnum from Media Verdi again. Well, this one just wants to go over there. Well, then you go over there. That's okay. Then I can put these lower later somewhere, those side branches. And these have giant heads on there. Beautiful materials. Um, then I come back on the other side again with them. Yes, there's another question. Oh. Oh, hey. <laughs> and it looks good. Oh, and Thank you. So then we have these beautiful um, lilacs that I've been eyeing on the whole time, wanting to put in there. Actually, I need a little bit more support, so I'm just adding some greens. What's up? Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you s yeah, the noise from the... I'm sorry about the noise from the scissors. So, some support over here, so that I can put this lilac there. And actually, for these type of branches, I just use my scissors. But, of course, you can also do it with a knife. That's a bit better, but my knife is not so sharp today. Yeah. Sorry, there was something you wanted to say? Actually, so this one is a lot pointier than this one, so I'd like to have this one higher. And then we'll put this one a little lower. Like that. Yep. And it should be supporting itself. Then, question, yes? Uh, <laughs> Amy, so yeah. <laughs> um, when you're doing open silhouette design, do you still need a shape in mind, or just go as to them and how you feel? Yeah, so there's, I think, multiple ways to approach it. Um, in the other one I made before, I kind of thought about creating a Hogarth line first. <laughs> And in this one, I'm just kind of going as I, as I want to go. And then I'll see where I end up. But normally, I would definitely um, 
take in mind of a certain shape or something. So the Hogarth line, for example. So some stuff goes up, some stuff goes down. And this one probably is going to become a little bit more V-shaped. Yep, that's an unsharp knife. So, then I'm trying to make the lilac go in the direction that it's growing. So you can see this lilac is going a little bit like this. So I want to use that movement. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> My mother is saying something very YouTube-y right now. She is saying, if you like this, please hit the like button. And also if you, you know, if we're thinking if this is something that people enjoy, we might do it more often, so then, oh my god, I feel like I'm such a pusher man now. Uh, if you want, you can subscribe and then we can see if we do another, another time, another, another stream. And then hopefully the Wi-Fi is working so we can have some multiple camera angles and stuff. All right, then um, we got some wax flower, which is nice and chaotic. It's uh, so we have closed and open shapes. That's what we say usually. So we can. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Naomi. We can have um, different textures. So this is like a more open texture. If you put only open textures in there, it becomes a little chaotic. If you put only closed materials in there, it might be even a little bit boring. Uh, so it's nice to search for a certain balance when you're making an arrangement. Then, let's see, I'll put, put in some, yeah, Gerberas, and I, I, hear, I hear there's a question again. Nancy Zimmerman is asking, yes, hey. how do you subscribe? Ah, so, thank you. If you have no YouTube account yet, um, let's see, then you just have to make a YouTube account, but there should be a button on there that says subscribe. Angelica, could you maybe explain how that works? Oh wait, no, you know what? I'm just gonna walk over there. There should be uh So if on the right you know the when I'm when I'm ready to go in back if you in there. Okay. I so let's see. I'm just gonna check it. There should be some place. Yeah, let's in there. Uh, hmm. at the bottom right. Oh. So well anyway, we'll fix that later. It's that doesn't matter right now. But um I'll give you uh there should be a page, our page should be somewhere, <laughs> our channel, and then you can just go on there and then you can press subscribe. My mother will kind of have a look how that works. But thank you in any case for wanting to subscribe. Oh, at the bottom right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're doing very professional stuff right here, guys. Okay, so you can, if you have this screen, there should be <laughs> Subscribe button over there. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. There you go. Yeah, Angelica, you said there was another question. Okay, so, um, Bert almost says, I'd love to see this again. It's mm. relaxing and interesting to watch. Ah, thank and you very much. Like I'm in the classroom. Ah, thank you. And Amy is there. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, Amy, um, does open silhouette design usually need uh, quite amount of many kinds of flowers? Good question. Um, I think it makes it interesting to have different types of uh, flowers in there. Um, and what the type, of the amount of flowers I have right now, some are open, some are pointy. Uh, I think shapes are very important in a design like this. Um, maybe uh, right now it's actually becoming a little bit more classical than I would like. But I think if you play a little bit more with uh, shapes that are pointy, like this syringa or maybe antirinum, uh, those are all very easy to use. So basically, yeah, I would say take a nice amount of different types of flowers. Uh, it takes also quite a, just, just like classical design that you have, that you need a little bit more flowers than if you would do a modern design, like what I did 
uh, before this one. Okay. I think I should play a little bit more with heights. So let's put in some of these beautiful marines. And let's just uh, make them go higher. Any more questions, Angelica, over there? We're all good. But they, they like uh, more to, to see more of this. OK. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. And Hazel says that they, the soup is very tasty. Thank you. Yeah. That's props for Dunya and Angelica. So definitely some people ask if we uh, should make a recipe book for these soups. And I definitely think that's something that we should at some point bring out or something, you know. I just want to accentuate the height differences a little bit more. Let's see, and I'm actually, I could use a bit more Gerberas over here. Maybe a bit more, yeah, even. So, and actually, I'm very, Happy that you guys are watching. Thank you very much. I hope that you know this will all be over soon. Um, not the stream, but you know the whole Corona situation. It kind of seems like it will continue all the way into the summer, um, and we have actually some really cool things planned for in the summer. Like um, Gregor is supposed to come uh, in June. Uh, end of June to teach the master course, an actual master course, like 20 lesson days uh, with a diploma and everything, um, a real training program. Um, so we have to see if that's going to happen or not. I'm very curious. Sorry, Angelica, yeah. Um, Sanji says, uh, same here, would love to see this again, uh, especially we've been on lockdown situation for three weeks. Oh I'm happy to see that Burmo is doing this today. Thank, uh, you, thank you. Thank you very much. Good, good to hear from you. So now I'm adding these puppies that I painted gold to bring back the... Normally I don't really use so much painted materials, but uh, these bring back a little bit the color of the base. Sorry, we have a question, Angelica? Um, I was asking the white tall flower is the Acacanthus. Ah, uh, the Nerina. This one. Yeah. It's not an Acacanthus. What's no. that? What, what is the right long... Uh, ah, okay, yes. So that's Nareen. And actually, I think I could use a little bit longer one if that's possible. Maybe we, have, we should have them. So... You also have them in pink, right? I, I don't think so. I don't have them in pink. Oh, no, they do exist. Yes, of course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you, Amo, for telling us. Oh, thank you, Amo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, it's getting messy. I'm... Not really, you know, I'm kind of chaotic guy, maybe, a bit. Angelica says yes. Angelica can vouch for that. I uh, try to not be messy, but I'm kind of messy. So, and then actually the only thing I'm still going to do in this piece is add those little bit higher marines in there. Then I think we are more or less set for now. Or maybe we can use some... Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Awesome. We are very lucky to be in Holland here. Yeah, we... All these beautiful flowers. Very lucky. So really grateful for all the floral fundamentals growers that did support us with these flowers. Sorry, yeah, Angelica. So um, first of all, Kami says the 40 years anniversary too. Yeah, you're right. So there's we have our f 40 years anniversary anniversary 40 years anniversary happening June 19th ish. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see if that's 
if we have to move that or if it's if it can happen of course we hope so because you know the school was started in 1980 um, so this year sh marks our 40th anniversary and actually yeah we're not sure if we we're going to celebrate that at the date that we planned but we might celebrate it on um, in November so if any one of you is here in November well if anyone is here anytime please feel free to come by even if it's just for a cup of coffee uh, but if we're celebrating our 40th anniversary which we still have to put out some uh, emails for also please feel free to come uh, all of our friends and students are welcome uh, and would be it's much appreciated if you could come hang out so all right so creating some height differences there So I, I like having them on there. I think it's natural, but you can also take them off. So, and I think I just need one more over here. Two. And I kind of massage it into a way that it stays in position. Angelica, you have a question. Well, Amal is asking, do you know if the moor is going to be in trouble because of the ah, situation? Um, there have not been any announcements yet about Thuramur, as far as I know, uh, if that's going to continue or not. It's September, really at the end of September, so um, it might still happen. I hope everything by September should, I, hope re I really hope everything at that date should just go and work out. But I cannot say, I cannot, you know, I don't know, that's the word. But even some events in July have already been cancelled, like uh, I was supposed to participate in the Singapore Flower Cup that has actually been moved to next year. So, yeah, very curious about how that all will go. Keukenhof, yeah, it's not open uh, and it probably won't. Yeah. Ask me Flower Fest Festival is cancelled, but we'll have our own flower festival here. We'll just do a live stream festival party, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right, I think that's more or less this design. Um, it's a little chaotic, more chaotic than the other one, but that was kind of the point. Um, it's totally different than what I would say boho. I, I would call the previous one a little bit more boho-ish. This is just a little bit more open outline as in there's no actual silhouette that's very clear or anything so um, i'll make some pictures of this later and then i think we keep it with this i think i don't have anything else to show you guys um, but if you have any questions we can hang out a little bit longer so please if you have any questions uh, for me right now just ask them and i'll um, and i'll wait a little bit right i think we can still do like maybe 15 minutes or 10 minutes or something like that and then so yeah mm -hmm. yeah there's a delay i know it's a little bit of water actually now i'm seeing the front probably would like to have something come out over there um Eigenlijk een asparagus of zo. Maar ik kan ook wel deze even eruit laten komen. If there's no questions, of course, that's also good. Ja. Nou, ik zou niet zeggen. Uh, so, we'll just we'll figure out the one we're going to do this for the next time, then if so people yeah, would like to. Ah. ah, that's a good question. Yep. <laughs> there we go. So. Um, I wouldn't, I don't think next week per se, because next week probably not, but the week after then definitely. Or we do it next week. Um, we'll see. Either way. We'll either way. Either way, it will be either way, if it's happening again, we're doing it on, when, which day is it today? Thursday? Thursday, yes, it's Thursday. So next time will be Thursday, uh, same time. So that's, uh, that's a good question. Thank you. All right. But if there's not any other questions anymore, actually, I'm going to put this on a wire. Why not? Wire?
Yeah, I'm just going to grab a wire for a sec, and then probably there might be a question. So, all right, so I'm just going to wire this. I took a 0 0.6 wire, and I am making a hook, adhering it to the stem, and then wire it through so that I can bend it a little bit and it stays in position how I want. Shouldn't be too visible. Mm -hmm. I would actually good for mine from your friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, we were doing that on the other side. Yes, nothing but happy accidents <laughs> in this stream. All right. I'm like the opposite of Bob Ross. I uh, don't have any afro. <laughs> All right, there we go. So, good. That's it then. I think uh, if there's no questions anymore. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, so please press, press like and subscribe. <laughs> and um, see you next time. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, wait. Maybe Angelica would like to wave hi and everyone here would like to wave hi. Yeah. Because then, so yeah, but one and a half meter. And Angelica half and I can stay next together, but. Well, we are family, so. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, that's true. And uh, today is uh, Axel's birthday. Oh, yes. He turned 25 today. <laughs> 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 All right. Happy birthday. So. All right. Thank you very Goodbye, much. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much. Now we're going to walk off screen <laughs> and then we're going to go.